So in this MLB video, I want to talk about five blockbuster MLB trades that I think could happen in 2023 or in 2024 during the season. But as always, make sure to leave your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. Let's get right into it. So the first blockbuster MLB trade that I think could happen in 2023 or in 2024 is Paul Goldschmidt getting traded to the, uh, to the Toronto Blue Jays. So Paul Goldschmidt's a pretty intriguing player because he played on the Cardinals last year who weren't very good. He just turned 36 years old back in September. So he's definitely on the wrong side of 35. We're not really, we're not really too sure how much left he has in the tank at a high production level. And he is heading into the last year of his contract. So it's going to be a pretty big decision for the Cardinals to make this uh, this offseason, I think, regarding Paul Goldschmidt. Um, are they going to re-engage in contract negotiations and perhaps sign this guy to like a two-year extension? Uh, do they want to keep him for this year and let him walk for nothing at the end of the year? Uh, do they want to trade him while his value is still relatively high and get back some assets in return for him? I'm not 100% sure what direction the Cardinals are going to go, but I think in my personal opinion, that might not be a terrible idea for the Cardinals to explore the trade market and ship Paul Goldschmidt to a contender, which I believe the Blue Jays could be uh, next year, despite a disappointing end to the season this past year for the uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays. So uh, Paul Goldschmidt, as I mentioned before, 36 years old, uh, can play primarily first base, but probably at this point of his career might not be a terrible DH, but honestly speaking... If he were to go to the Blue Jays and play first base, it's probably an upgrade over uh, Vladdy, if you ask me. You know, Paul Goldschmidt being a four-time Gold Glove Award winner, he's definitely a lot better defensively, despite the fact that he is up there in age. I'd rather have him. I'd rather have him at first base personally than Vladdy Guerrero Jr. Uh, but this past year for Paul Goldschmidt, he put up a 3.4 WAR, 159 hits, 25 home runs, a batting average of 268, 89 runs scored, 80 RBIs, 11 stolen bases, and on base of 363, 447 slugging, an OPS of 810, and an OPS plus of one. 21. So I'm a big fan of Paul Goldschmidt. I'm also a big fan of the Blue Jays. So I think the Blue Jays could definitely garner their starting rotation. Uh, perhaps they could flip a player on an expiring deal like Yusei Kikuchi, for example, uh, back to uh, St. Louis to hopefully address their pitching situation there. So that could be a potential idea. Uh, they have some prospects to make this work as well. But I think if you're the Toronto Blue Jays, you need to add a veteran, a leader to this clubhouse. Uh, it's pretty evident to me that players like Bo Bichette and Vladdy Guerrero Jr. just aren't mature enough to carry this team uh, you know, to a postseason run. Uh, so I think if you're able to bring on a veteran player at this point, like the 36-year-old Paul Goldschmidt, who's a seven-time All-Star, won the NBA MVP, of course, back in 2022 uh, and is a five-time Silver Slugger Award winner. He'd be a nice addition to this team, even if, it's only, even if it's only like a one to a two-year deal, whatever the case may be, on a contract extension. I think Paul Goldsmith finishing off his career north of the border and perhaps going on a championship run with the Toronto Blue Jays. Might just be the cherry on top for a pretty historic Hall of Fame career, if you ask me, uh, for Paul Goldschmidt. So, the first trade that I think could happen is Paul Goldschmidt getting traded to the Toronto Blue Jays. The next blockbuster MLB trade that I think could happen this offseason or in 2024 is Max Kepler getting traded to the New York Yankees. Now, it's not really a surprise that Max Kepler is going to be involved in trade conversations once again this offseason. Uh, Max Kepler was talked about as a potential Yankees target last offseason. Obviously, nothing ended up happening. And Max Kepler actually had himself a pretty awesome year this past year for the Minnesota Twins. So this past year for Max Kepler, he put up a 2.9 more season, 114 hits, 24 home runs, a batting average of 260, a 72 runs scored, 66 RBIs, one stolen base, and on base of 332, 44 slugging, an OPS of 816, and an OPS plus of 121. So a pretty awesome year for Max Kepler. I believe at this point, probably a career season for him. Uh, Max Kepler is going to be entering the last year of his contract, uh, assuming that the team, assuming that the Twins actually do opt into his team option this summer, uh, this winter, which I fully expect them to uh, probably do. But uh, Max Kepler is coming off of a pretty awesome season season and his trade value from a twins perspective is pretty much at an all-time high so if you are max kepler you can play right field you're a lefty bat which is always nice to add uh, to this yankees lineup you're also too only going to be 31 years old next year so in regards to uh production for the foreseeable future max kepler probably has another five uh years left in him at a pretty high level and if he can sort of build off the year that he had this past year for the twins and take that over to the bronx bombers and to the yankees organization He'd be a pretty phenomenal player. I think Max Kepler uh, with the Yankees could definitely be a, a really good 20 to 30 home run guy. He could probably hit around 260, 250. Uh, this guy can get on base, probably hit high in the lineup, potentially get on base for someone like Aaron Judge and be a bit of a table setter for him so that players like Anthony Rizzo and Aaron Judge can hit this guy home. And if you're able to have Max Kepler probably hit, and I would say the two hole perhaps, uh, having uh, Anthony Volpe lead off, Max Kepler in the two, maybe someone like Rizzo in the three or Judge in the three, and then the other one in the four. That's a pretty good start lineup if you ask me uh, in regards to the top half um, of your batting order so i think max kepler checks a lot of boxes for the yankees him being a left-handed hitter is always nice to have uh, him coming off of a career season is definitely not ideal 
But if you are the Twins and you're not going to be signing this guy to a long-term extension, then why not capitalize on his value uh, being at pretty much an all-time high? So uh, the next blockbuster trade that I think could happen this offseason or in 2024 is Max Kepler getting traded to the New York Yankees. The next blockbuster MLB trade that I think could happen this offseason or in 2024 is Max Freed getting traded to the Boston Red Sox. So I think if you're a Braves fan, you probably don't really see a world where Max Freed will depart the team via the trade market, uh, just sort of with how good this Braves team has been the last couple of years and bringing back their own players internally on big time team friendly contract extensions. You're hoping that Max Freed probably follows suit. Uh, and if Max Freed is able to uh, sign a team friendly deal for the foreseeable future, this would just be a step in the right direction for the Braves in hopefully winning a championship uh, before this core eventually blows up. Now, Max Freed is going to be 30 years old this year and he is going to be heading into the last year of his deal. So the pressure could be on the Braves in regards to exploring the trade market for him. Now, I don't really think the Braves want to trade him this year, so they're probably going to let him walk for nothing in free agency uh, when it's all said and done just because they want to keep their window open this year, uh, this upcoming year in 2024. And I think by keeping Max Freed, he definitely uh, keeps that window open for you guys in regards to winning a championship. But if the Braves, who, by the way, are a fairly smart organization, want to do this uh, the best way in regards to asset management, it might not be a terrible idea for them uh, to consider the trade market for Max Freed, get some good prospects in return, and keep your window open for the next you know, 10 years as opposed to the next couple of years with someone like Max Freed in the lineup. So uh, Max Freed is a, is a tremendous player this past year. Fairly small sample size, only the 14 games, but uh, he put up a 2.7 war, 8 wins, 1 loss, an, er an ERA of 2.55, uh, 77 innings pitched with 80 strikeouts, and a whip of 1.133. So Max Freed, tremendous pitcher. I uh, would definitely be an awesome addition to this Red Sox team. And I think the Boston Red Sox want to start turning the page fairly soon in regards to them competing for a championship. So I could definitely see a world where uh, they want to uh, compete now uh, and they want to, especially with uh, some new uh, front office members coming into the uh, to the mix this offseason, if they want to make a big time splash, why not go after one of the best players possibly available on the trade market in an expiring contract like Max Freed, uh, who of course has championship experience, has been named to the All-Star game once. He's also a three-time Gold Glove Award winner pitcher, so that's also pretty cool. And also to a silver slugger so max free can kind of do it all but I think him going to Boston uh, would be a pretty awesome place for him to go. Uh, he could definitely be the clear-cut ace for this team for the foreseeable future. And if the Red Sox are willing to give Max Freed a big-time extension, uh, which is, you know, hopefully a step in the right direction for them because they've lost players like Xander Bogarts and Mookie Betts for not wanting to pay those guys, uh, it could definitely get Red Sox fans back on track and back on the bandwagon of cheering for the Red Sox. And hopefully this team uh, can compete for a playoff spot in a very competitive division uh, as early as next year if this year were to happen. So I think the Boston Red Sox definitely are going to be exploring the free agency market and the trade market uh, for starting pitching. So perhaps if they miss out on players like Shohei Otani, Blake Snell, or Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and maybe shifting their gears or shifting their attention towards the trade market for someone like Max Freed could be a possibility. Uh, so the third blockbuster trade that I think could happen this offseason is Max Freed going to the Boston Red Sox. So the next blockbuster trade that I think could happen this offseason or at some point during the 2024 MLB season is the Milwaukee Brewers trading away Willie Adamas to the Seattle Mariners. Now, Willie Adamas is a pretty intriguing player to me because sort of like his teammates Corbin Burns and Brandon Woodruff, I fully expect all three of these players to be on the trade market this 2023-24 MLB offseason uh, due to the fact that they are entering the last year of their deals respectively. So... I think if you are Willie Adamas, uh, you could perhaps be finding a new home this offseason uh, heading into uh, heading into 2024 because I don't really see a world where the Brewers are going to be bringing back all three of these players. So uh, Willie Adamas plays a pretty prime position and of course him being a shortstop uh, so that's going to garner some attention definitely on the trade market. And for a shortstop, he actually puts up some pretty solid numbers despite not having the best year at the plate uh, last year for the Brewers. So this past year uh, for Willie Adamas, he put up a 3.0 war season, 120 hits, uh, 24 home runs. A batting average of 217, 73 runs scored, 80 RBIs, 5 stolen bases, an on base of 310, 407 slugging, an OPS of 717, and an OPS plus of just 95. So, honestly speaking, here, not the best year for Willie Adamas. His average was down, his OPS plus was down, his OPS was down, his on base was only 310. So, not the best year for him, uh, but defensively speaking, he's actually pretty solid. 
And I think if you are the Seattle Mariners, they're definitely looking for some more help for their infield. Um, there was some reports of them possibly being interested in Glaber Torres of the Yankees. So if that, you know, that could potentially become a possibility there uh, for Glaber to be the new second baseman there. But also if they want to shift their attention towards an expiring deal uh, at the shortstop position, Willie Adamas could definitely be that guy. Uh, I think Willie Adamas going to uh, Seattle would be a pretty nice move for them. Seattle has some young pitching staff, uh, some young pitchers that they could potentially uh, be giving, you know, the Brewers in return. They could possibly give up on a player as well. Maybe like a tie France, whatever the case may be, uh, in order to make this work. But I think William Adams going to the Pacific Northwest would actually be a pretty good thing for him to go to. Uh, if he can be like a 20 to 25 home run guy, he could sort of make up for the departure of Teoscar Hernandez, who's probably going to be leaving the team in free agency. So I think uh, if you are William Adams, the idea of him going uh, to the Seattle Mariners and being part of a championship caliber team there, that's definitely pretty intriguing if you ask me. So uh, I know William Adams will definitely command quite a bit on the trade market, despite him not having a fantastic year this past year. Uh, the years prior to this year in Milwaukee were pretty good, uh, if you ask me. So I think William Adams can definitely bring a lot of value to the table uh, if you are the Brewers in regards to a trade. So I have the Seattle Mariners trading forum uh, in this trade idea for the 2023 MLB offseason or during the 2024 MLB season. The next blockbuster trade that I think could happen this offseason or in 2024 is Corbin Burns, teammate of William Adams, getting traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers. So the Los Angeles Dodgers once again fell short of expectations this uh, this postseason uh, with them bowing out, I think in two games only, uh, to maybe it was three games only, whatever the case was, uh, to the Arizona Diamondbacks. So it wasn't super ideal. Now, you could blame the injuries on this team uh, or their starting rotation being pretty thin or whatever the case may be. But uh, next year in 2024, there's going to be a lot of pressure on this team when healthy to run it back and hopefully have some more success come playoff time. So if you want to sort of add to that success and hopefully increase your chances of winning a playoff round or two next year, if I am the Los Angeles Dodgers, I'm really considering the possibility of adding uh, Corbin Burns of the Milwaukee Brewers. So Corbin Burns is going to be 29 years old next year uh, in 2024. I do believe also he is from Bakersfield, California. So uh, the idea of him returning closer to his hometown might not be, you know, a bad idea. It could be pretty intriguing towards him. Uh, perhaps a team that he could be a one to sign a long-term extension with uh, when it's all said and done. So I think if you're Corbin Burns, the idea of going to the Los Angeles Dodgers and competing for a championship right away is honestly a pretty good idea if you ask me. This past year for Corbin Burns was pretty solid once again, uh, putting up a 3.6 war, 10 wins, 8 losses in the area of 3.39, uh, 32 games played, 193 innings pitched with 200 strikeouts, and a whip of 1.069. So for Corbin Burns, he's a pretty solid player. Definitely would bring a lot of value to this team, especially once players like Tony Gonsolin come back from their injuries, uh, Walker Buehler come back from their injuries, if they can re-sign Clayton Kershaw and add someone like Corbin Burns to the mix. This team all of a sudden in Los Angeles is, you know, possibly has the scariest pitching staff in all of baseball if these guys are all healthy. So that's a big gift there. Uh, but if Corbin Burns is not going to be re-signing uh, with the Milwaukee Brewers, which I think also has point towards him, probably not, uh, just sort of given how negotiations have, uh, how negotiations have gone uh, between Burns' camp and the Brewers in the past, I could see a trade happening. So I think that he's, if he's able to go uh, back to his hometown in Los Angeles and play for the Los Angeles Dodgers, it could possibly be a dream come true. And I think if you are uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers, adding a player that can hopefully be a difference maker come playoff time like Corbin Burns for instance especially is more insurance because of an injury but if not I still a pretty awesome player to add so I think the last player that could possibly be traded this offseason in a blockbuster trade would be Corbin Burns getting traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers so that is going to be it for this video thanks again for watching make sure to leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section as always have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one